Hello everyone and a warm welcome. In this tutorial, we'll package our code component and deploy it in the Power Apps. So let's quickly get into the code. So we have Visual Studio code out here open and I'm going to use the terminal to go ahead and package it. So let me go ahead and first create a folder so that we can have our solution in there. So I'm going to go ahead and type in mkdir solutions solutions is the name of my folder the folder has been created that's awesome so let me go ahead and cd into it finally i'm going to go ahead and use the pack commandlets to package our solution in this case i will type in pack if you see i'm going to use the pack solution the pack solutions are commands for working with data verse solution projects right that's the important part paste in a line of code which tells pack solution in it publisher name my name and the publisher prefix at this point if you see we have no errors we get a response saying the dataverse solution or the project solution has been created in this folder so here is my solutions folder it has an src and it has got git ignore and it has the solutions cd CDS proj file. At this point, my project is ready. What I want to do next is I want to add a reference to the solution. So to add a reference, I go back to my folder and I need to go ahead and pass in the path. I'll paste it here and I'll hit enter. So if you see, I have no errors. It tells me that the reference was added successfully. Take a note that I did not pass in the solutions. I passed in the folder. Now that is good. What I want to do is that I want to go ahead and use Visual Studio development tools. So let me quickly open that. I'm going to do a CD first. So let me change the directory. And this time I'm going to select the path of the solutions. So I have pasted it here and I'll hit enter. And then I will say MS build T restore. So at this point, it's building my project and it should create a zip file. Now, let me actually go back here. Shows me an OBJ. It seems that I don't have a zip file as of now. So I'm going to do something else. I'm just going to say MS build first. And now it should actually create my zip file. It's taking a lot of time. So I assume that it will do what it's intended to do. Perfect. So now if I go back to my folder again, I see a bin folder inside the bin there is debug and this is the solutions. I'm not publishing it as a managed solution. We will talk about it maybe in the later topic, but let's first test it. So I'm into my make.powerapps. I'll go into my solutions and I'll try to import my solution. Copy as path. And I'll hit next. And I'll click on import. So my solution is getting imported. It might take approximately four minutes or five minutes. So I'm going to pause the video and we'll get back. So my solution has been imported. What I'm going to do is I'm going to publish all of my customizations. Perfect. Now that my solution has been imported and let me create an app. Let's create a blank app. Let's give it a name. Test demo. I'm not that innovative or smart with naming conventions. You might have already observed that. Click on new. I'm going to click on get more code components. Here I see the code components and here is our react counter. And this is what we are going to use. So the react counter is here. I can just click on it. And the react counter is now visible, right? Now what I want to do is I want to actually see the values associated with it. So the primary display key, we should have given a better naming convention for that. Why is it coming as primary display key? 
I'll tell you that because we changed the property name but we did not change the display name so my friends be very good with the display names right uh, at this point it's okay this is a tutorial so we will learn together we will make mistakes together and we will improve together as well however if you look at this we also want to find our output value the output value it seems to be the counter value so what I can do is I can say react counter one dot counter value so it's giving me the counter value it's zero but look at this as soon as I click on plus it goes to 101 goes to 100 and it goes to zero so you my friends you have created your react counter app and you have integrated it with your power apps or the canvas app you can also use the same with the model driven app but for this tutorial we'll just use the canvas app now if you don't find your code components or if you don't find when you click on this button you don't find the code out here or the code tab this is because you need to go to the admin center you need to click on environments select your environment click on settings click on product click on features and you need to activate the power apps component framework for canvas app once you have this on you will be able to use your components in your canvas apps as well and i think this is pretty much it congratulations you have completed the tutorial series on react power apps component framework i hope this tutorial series was informative thank you for your time i'll also go ahead and link to the github code so that you can just copy it thank you have a great day bye bye